Day 318. A lot of updates are once again coming from Solidar. Solidar has become one of the hottest parts of the front line, where a lot of changes happen every hour. Yesterday night, the footage was posted by Wagner forces, claiming that they had breached Ukrainian defense and gained access to the salt mines. Other reports also started coming in, suggesting that the Russians had already established fire control over the roads leading to Solidar, started attacking Solidar from every direction, and that the city was about to be captured. However, while Russian military bloggers are trying to keep up the momentum of achievements and inflate Russian progress, the head of the Wagner forces that are actually fighting there gave almost completely the opposite view, and said that even though they have recently secured some tactical gains, Solidar is nowhere to be taken yet. And here is why. Last time I told you that the line of separation has shifted from the eastern part of Solidar closer to the central part, and that the area is between is to a large extent a grey zone where the Russians do not maintain a permanent presence. I told you that the main Ukrainian defense line goes along the residential and industrial areas, and despite the overwhelming reports of fights, this has not changed. After Wagner forces posted yesterday the video where they fight near the salt mines, a lot of people assume that they are already here. However, this is not true. First of all, there are three large areas devoted to extracting salt. One is located near the residential area, and two are located west of it. Secondly, each area has several salt mines. Thirdly, when it comes to the one located near the residential area, it also has a tourist area and sanatorium. Today's reports clarified the situation a lot and indicated that yesterday the Russians conducted an attack along the Zhovtneva and Tinista streets and only assaulted the tourist area near the first salt mine. The fights there are indeed taking place, but this should not be surprising, because as mentioned previously, this is where the Ukrainians established their defense line, so why would they step out and fight in the open if they can operate under the cover of industrial zone? The purpose of the tactical retreat was to assume more reliable positions. Other fights are taking place on the eastern outskirts. Here the Ukrainians are using the same tactic. They stepped back from the first street to the second one to create a buffer zone and avoid direct fire from Yakovlevka. If you look at the topographic map, we can see that the Russians control the heights. The Russians in Yakovlevka are at an altitude of 180 meters, while the Ukrainians in the eastern outskirts are at an altitude of 120 meters, so around 60 meters below the Russians. Yakovlevka itself is less than 4 kilometers away. So what this means is that the Russians have very good fire control over the outer streets. The Russians reportedly use various anti-tank systems to target Ukrainian tanks that are in direct vision. They are also firing from their own tanks at Ukrainian positions on the outskirts. That is why the Ukrainians had to give away the outer street to create a buffer. And that is why the Wagners were able to create a semblance of huge progress where it seems like the Ukrainian defense line has been breached in multiple places. In reality, the situation did not change much, and the fights are still taking place inside the buffer zones. In fact, the head of the Wagner forces, Prigozhin himself, said that the discussion of the total capture of Solodar is premature. As Prigozhin is trying to promote his private army, premature talks of the capture of the city can undermine its reputation if the city continues to stand which is why Prigozhin was so quick to lower people's expectations back to the baseline. If we zoom out and look at the bigger picture, we can notice that the Russians may not even be trying to take Solidar by brute force. Over the last two days, it was reported that the Russians had assaulted Petrohorodnya, Krasnohora, Krasnopolivka and Rostolivka. Attacking these settlements is extremely difficult because the Russians get into the crossfire from Solidar. However, now, as the Russians are attacking the salt mine area, they are fixing Ukrainian troops and opening a window of opportunity to storm the settlements to the south. The same happens to the north. They assault the outskirts of Solidar to keep the Ukrainian troops busy while they are attacking other settlements on the line. The Russians understand that if they cut off Ukrainians from the flanks, the Ukrainians in Solidar would have to retreat without a fight or risk being taken into a pocket. So the Russians are fixing Ukrainian troops in Solidar while they are trying to set the conditions to conduct a double flank attack. The main focus of the Ukrainians 
likely needs to be reinforcing the flanks and making sure that the Russians cannot breach them. Because Ukrainian fortifications inside Solodar are quite formidable, and it is unlikely that the Russians can take the city in front by brute force. Overall, the Ukrainian defense line in Solodar has not been breached. Ukrainian supplies and reinforcements are also coming from the rear with no problems. Even though the fights are reportedly taking place almost along the entire perimeter, a lot of them are just spoiling attacks that try to fix Ukrainian troops inside the city while the Russians try to outflank them from two sides. So far, the attacks towards Krasnohora, Krasnopolievka and Rostolievka have been only reconnaissance in nature, so there is no threat of being outflanked at this moment. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.